This means that you can't talk. You can't speak. Are constricted and can't move. I do not know. I have no idea. No, I have no idea. I, I couldn't talk. Hello, I'm Dr. Thomas. I receive emails every day about voice problems. I received an email from a delightful 80-year-old, Peter, who lives to talk. His entire family talks all the time. He had the very unfortunate experience, however, of five years ago developing a anaplastic cancer of his thyroid. His voice hadn't changed. He underwent radiation therapy, and then he had a surgery to remove the cancer. The cancer's gone, hasn't come back, but 24 hours after the surgery, he lost much of his voice. That is, his voice became weak, and it stayed that way for the past five years. His main complaints are that he can't compete at, with background noise, such as when he goes to a restaurant, his family can't hear him anymore, and that the more he talks, the more his voice gives out. Now, why does he have these complaints, and are they related to his vocal paralysis? Let's take a listen to Peter's voice. Man's first boat. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Now, we hear that Peter's voice is actually normal in a sense of normal. We could hear every word he's said in this recording. And that leads us to one very important point, the distinction between speech and voice. We can make a distinction by drawing a line on my neck here, just above the Adam's apple. Everything up here has to do with speech. That is, we make words and sentences with our mouth. Everything from that line down has to do with sound production. The vocal cords generate a pitch, and they control volume. Peter has problems with sound. He can't get loud enough. He can't be heard long enough. But as you heard, he can speak normally. The tongue, the palate, the lips, they're all working fine. He can communicate. So the first notion to dispel is that vocal cord paralysis makes you lose your ability to speak. It does not. Let's also take a look at his vocal cords and see if we can identify what a paralysis is. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of normal vocal cords. Let's look at the picture. Okay, let's do it again in slow motion. If we watch these vocal cords, we can see there's one on the left and one on the right, and that they come together when we want to make a sound. Now, let's look at Peter's vocal cords. Let's look at it in slow motion so we see the detail. On the right side of the screen is Peter's left vocal cord, and it's opening and closing completely. It comes all the way to the middle. However, on the other side of the screen, that vocal cord was motionless. The right vocal cord is sitting still. The right vocal cord is paralyzed. Now, it's fortunate for Peter that it's fixed in a position where his good left vocal cord can close and meet it. That means when Peter's vocal cords come together all the way and he blows air between them, they vibrate, and he has a functional voice. If I take you on a tour of Peter's voice box and we watch again the closure, there's a subtle detail that I'm going to slow down and show you, and that is that as this left vocal cord comes close, it meets the other one, and then as Peter puts air underneath of it, the right vocal cord actually bulges out. Now, what does that do? That creates a gap between the vocal cords. And that gap, air leaks through. Air leaking through your vocal cords creates white noise, like a whisper. <sighs> and that's why the quality of his voice has changed. That's why he can't talk as long as everyone else. Now, what do we notice here? We can hardly see the vocal cords. He's squeezing so hard just to make a sound at his normal speaking pitch that we can't see the vocal cords. Well, he compensates for it. Because there's two sets of nerves that go to the voice box, the one that raises pitch is still working. Let's watch what Peter does to make a better sound. As Peter goes up in pitch, the vocal cords get pulled longer. And what we notice is that the squeeze goes away. So if Peter's speaking at his normal low-pitched voice, all this squeeze causes him to fatigue and his voice gives out. Or he has a choice, maybe an unconscious one, and he speaks at a higher pitch. But even that he can only maintain for so long, and that's what accounts for his symptom of giving out.
Ultimately, paralysis is a nerve injury that impairs a muscle's motion. And in Peter, it was incredibly obvious. He had his right vocal cord fixed and it didn't open at all. His left vocal cord could open and close. And because they could meet in the midline, he generated sound. He could still speak. Secondly, we learned in the details that when there's a gap, air escapes. When there's a gap, the patient has to squeeze really hard and they account for the patient's symptoms or complaints. That is, vocal fatigue can't compete with background noise. If you'd like to learn more about vocal cord paralysis, check out our next video where we treat Peter's symptoms. Or check out voicedoctor.net online. I'm Dr. James Thomas. Yeah, so if your doctor said you have vocal cord paralysis, what would you expect your voice to be? Oh, it would sound like I couldn't talk. Like, just guess. There would just be a lot of air coming out, but no definitive sound. Is okay. that correct? Well, tell us the right, <laughs> the correct answer.